Happy Friday, everybody. It's hashtag FAQ Friday, live from my office in the Lake District. And this week's frequently asked questions, businesses, numbers of um, individuals, people in the UK looking to help and support Ukrainians who are fleeing the war zone at this present moment and what does all that entail so we've got the hospitality industry is in a perfect uh, position in the fact that if you've got accommodation and you've got jobs available you will be in a, a great uh, position to actually attract people uh, to come, come over from Ukraine and help and support them and I've got uh, a strategy and plan how you can do that but first of all let's let's actually hone in because a lot of um people have been asking me about um you know what what how can you do this how you know what are the legalities in it and how can we actually break down the barriers so uh first of all obviously there is Ukraine support out there with the government. Um, the Chamber of Commerce is uh, actually around the country. I have got full details with regard to this. It's also on the government website. And it's actually highlighting how um, we in the UK can help and support. Um, obviously, there are a number of different different places where you can go to this but uh, exiting Ukraine and in immigration considerations for the UK so as we've got hotel rooms being offered with jobs um, and also people who are looking up to open up their homes for families etc and there's all sorts of sponsorship opportunities here so the general considerations that are currently going on is if you are still in the Ukraine, not everybody can leave Ukraine, uh, which includes men aged between 80 to 60 and women in strategically important jobs such as doctors, hospitals, um, but there are limited exceptions here. There are no commercial flights from the Ukraine, so travel will be over land and most uh, visa application centers are closed, as you can imagine. Evacuation will probably need to be through a bordering country such as Hungary, uh, Moldova, Poland, Slovakia or Romania. Generally, travellers will need a biometric passport to be able to cross the borders, although uh, exceptions are permitted if an individual is able to show documentation to prove their identity, such as an ID, date of a uh, birth certificate and expired passport. Um, now, UK arrangements are, have, have manifested. So the UK visa application centres um, are closed and all visa services are currently suspended until further notice in Ukraine. Uh, and applications must now be made outside of Ukraine. So uh, you can apply for, uh, if you're in Ukraine, you can apply uh, for visas to travel safely, which is a visa application centre, the VAX. Um, and these are in any country uh, if you can travel safely and currently operating throughout Europe, including Budapest, Hungary, um, Moldova, so Chisinau uh, in Moldova, Warsaw in Poland, Bucharest in Romania and Paris, France. So Ukrainian nationals cannot enter the UK without a visa. Um, so this is this is quite interesting because uh, at the moment the government are working on this. The quickest option is a visa free as a traveller. You can uh, view visa free options from Ukrainian nationals and under normal circumstances, visitors are limited to 90 to 180 days in their destination country. If the country is a member of the Shenanigan uh, area, the limitation applies to the entire uh, Shenanigan area. But in some cases can switch to a work or other visa category. Uh, arrangements differ in each country and concessions may be available for Ukrainian nationals. Uh, you may wish to research those options before deciding on a destination country 
uh, where you have a choice. And these are for Ukrainians looking um, to access out. So there's lots of other visa options. There's the conventional uh, sponsored routes, which is UK immigration rules allow for visas to be granted where work. So you can actually apply for work uh, and employer is willing to sponsor people who are coming over or study an academic institution is willing to sponsor you. Uh, there is also a Ukraine family scheme um, where we have a result if you're um, it allows Ukrainians or immediate family members of Ukrainians who have been residing in Ukraine prior to the 1st of January 2022 to join or accompany the UK based immediate or extended family member. The UK based family member must be British, hold a permanent residence residency or status under the EU settlement scheme um, and evidence of such relationships should be provided at the time of application. Those joining the scheme will be granted leave for three years that will, will allow holders to live, work and study in the UK, which is which is absolutely ideal. The scheme is free and does not include any salary or language requirements and the immigration health surcharge is not payable. Uh, the VAC in Kiev is closed, um, which is a visa application centre, and all UK visa services are suspended uh, in Kiev. Um, you can apply in any other country, as we mentioned earlier, and a digital application for those with biometric passport is available from uh, the 15th of March. So it's all it's all happening with regard to that. Now, what I wanted to inform you, because obviously, how will it impact your business? What will happen? How can you do this? Well, I've already got a, a strategy and plan in place ready for homeless into hospitality, which is what AJ Lakes wants to be doing in the next couple of years uh, to eradicate homelessness in the UK. But we can bring that forward with the structure uh, for how you can how you could bring Ukrainians over here. Obviously, we've got to be uh, legally making sure that we don't do it incorrectly because I don't want anybody to be um, fined or sanctioned at all. Uh, so, you know, we've got, we've got to be really clear. There are lots of um, information and guidance for businesses about the situation in Ukraine of how you can actually help and support. Uh, there's lots of different um, declarations, information on the your local chamber of commerce, but also on the government site. And there's also uh, written information and reports uh, currently. So what can you be doing right now? Well, you could actually sponsor somebody to come over. Uh, from the Ukraine. Be very clear on what roles and responsibilities you're looking for in your job roles that you currently have. Could you uh, allow a hotel room to be uh, rented out to these individual individuals free of charge? Uh, and there could be individuals, but there could be families as well. Now, I have got actually in Cumbria, especially because I've I've been working on this for the last uh, week and a half, maybe two weeks. But I actually met a lady called Nikki Pope, who uh, I talked this through on Sunday last week at an event uh, that I was at. And um, you know, if if we had were hotels or businesses with accommodation, or we need to speak to our local MPs, is there any uh, houses that are left empty at the moment? Uh, where we can house any Ukrainian families. Um, but in Cumbria, especially right now, I've got a system and a strategy and people ready to help. So what can you do? Well, we could have in hotels, for example, and you could do this in any business, where you would have a Ukrainian flag that would be a training uh, centre so that people, your customers would be uh, very obviously understanding and accepting and, and help and support you to look after um, our Ukrainian um, partners. 
So I think it's really important that we have some kind of a standard that we showcase on the front of our buildings or on our website or anything that we could possibly do to say we've got people in training here um, and be patient with us if we're teaching languages. The other element that I've got um, already in place in Cumbria is um, Rachel Holiday, who I know very well. Uh, she has women out west in Cumbria, but she's also given me access to another two centres, which is then county wide, where if, as we know, men from the ages of 18 to 60 in Ukraine uh, are not allowed to um, leave the country because obviously they've got to stay. But if their wives and families are being brought over, there's going to be a lot of trauma going on. There's going to be a lot of uh, worry um, and there's going to be uh, you know potentially a language barrier and obviously a bit of fear that's going on with them and, and if we can actually help manage that situation by having the centres that I've already um, set up one but I've potentially got another two which is making it county-wide uh, where we can actually help to integrate our um, Ukrainian neighbours into our community and actually look after them and get childcare support and help um, as well as integrating you know within our our jobs that we've got currently as an issue but also in accommodation as well so I've got all these processes in in place but obviously the structure just needs to be ironed out and we need to make sure that we can get these visas uh, working visas so you don't get um, in trouble at all as well. So what can you be doing? It will impact your business positively because you will be helping and supporting people who are currently uh, in desperate need. That's number one. Number two, you potentially could be fulfilling some roles and responsibilities in your organisation uh, by helping and supporting these uh, individuals or families. Um, and and it's a win-win situation. It's a great thing to do. It's we are human beings at the end of the day, and we need to help and support each other to to get over this horrific situation that's happening in Ukraine. Um, how will it impact on customers? Well, uh, obviously, it's a learning curve. It's managing change. Um, um, but I think the more you communicate, and I've I've always said this when you're managing any kind of change. The more you communicate and actually uh, get people on board and being responsible for helping you on your journey uh, for training and developing these individuals. And, and there's lots of golden nuggets out there. And if we can help with English speaking for other language courses um, and I can help, obviously, with the training academy, uh, we can we can certainly see how we can um interpret as well we've got interpreters who potentially can help uh, at these um, centers that I've, I've mentioned uh, but also you know people will be looking for uh, peace and quiet and some rest and relaxation because they'll have been through a lot of trauma uh, through through the last uh, few months so it's it will impact on your customers, I think, very positively, as long as you communicate what you're doing. And I think by having a brand image of a Ukrainian flag uh, with training in progress and uh, please support would be a brilliant uh, way to go. How will it impact on your employees? Well, again, it's a communication element again. And if you say as a team, we're here to help and support this family or these families and, and actually work together in, in, let's all work together in making this happen, make it happen. I'd like to know if any of you'd like to be involved. If you please contact me, that would be amazing. DM me on the social media or Alison at AJ Lakes um, and we'll put something together. So what can I do to support um, myself? As, so what can you do to support yourself as a business and as your customers and your employees? It's obviously have very secure. Make sure your DBS checked as well, because if you've got families, a lot of accommodation isn't great. It's not geared up for families. And I understand that. But have you got a hotel room that you could possibly corner off or, you know, use? Uh, 
uh, for a family uh, potentially but have a conversation with your local MP see if there's any chance that you can have a, a look if there's any um, homes that are available or any local residents in your village or your towns or your cities where they can open up their homes if there's a couple of uh, bedrooms that they've got spare um, and, and, and definitely read the government guidelines because there are very, they are very clear. You can sponsor people to come over here um, and work, but you've got to be really clear what you're looking for. So get your job descriptions absolutely bang up to date with very clear uh, salaries. There are some issues with salaries, but I don't think that's going to be as uh, needed uh, when I look deep into it as uh, it would have been prior to this situation. So certainly get all your uh, roles and responsibilities. Why you couldn't fill the jobs uh, in the UK currently and uh, let's get working together. So let's actually bring some families over here. Let's look after them. Let's make sure that uh, we have uh, a hospitality industry that you know is very kind and forgiving which is which is uh, very kind and giving apologies um and that's what we are we're very hospitable in hospitality and we're great at uh, managing change being flexible and diversifying and innovating so let us do that now let's look after uh these you know this situation is horrific let's look after these people who need our help and support thank you very much for listening please contact me if you've got any questions uh, I am still in the process of finishing the structure obviously so it makes it easier but in the meantime get your job descriptions absolutely all sorted your job adverts um and what roles and responsibilities see if you've got anybody locally who can do english speaking to other languages or interpreters etc um, and i will do my best to help and support you along the way so may i wish you all the very best take care and happy friday everybody happy weekend take care bye bye